Well, Merry Christmas, Grace Place Church family. We're so grateful that you allow us to enter into your living room, maybe an area where you have freshly opened presents. Uh, maybe you're waiting for family to come. Maybe it's close to where you're preparing uh, for a lunch together with your family. We're just grateful that you invited us and that we can be with you today. If you were here on December the 18th and I was wearing this shirt, that would be weird. Or it might be movie magic. We don't know. We're glad you're here. We're grateful that uh, for each one of you. And we are here to kind of share with you a little bit about what's behind Christmas. And I hope today what you take away from what we're talking about is God not only is in your today, he's in your tomorrows and he's prepared a plan that he wants to execute for your life. And we see that through what accomplished what was accomplished through Jesus Christ. We're looking at Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. In our church uh, family, it's a tradition that we stand for the reading of God's Word. If you're able to do that and can, you're welcome to. If not, stay seated and follow along with us. The scripture passage uh, will appear uh, so you can follow along with our reading. Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. And everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, to the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came and the ba for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Heavenly Father, we come to you and we invite you in these moments to speak to our hearts. There are those that are listening right now, Lord, who are wondering if the plan that's being executed in their life is being divinely directed. We can know that and we'll talk about that today. You can give them the assurance that they're being directed and their purpose is being fulfilled according to what you have planned and will glorify you. But God, I pray that you would just open the eyes of our understanding, our ears to hear, and that we might participate and move in action as you are calling us and moving us forward because you have planned for us to be here right now in this time, right now in the place where we are, right now in the community in which we live. There is a plan you want to execute through us for your glory. God, help us to get our eyes on you and follow you every step of the way. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, Mary and Joseph uh, traveled from Nazareth to Bethlehem because of a census that was required uh, for them to register uh, their presence there. Now, it was a journey of about 70 miles. And so for us here locally to get our minds around that, it would be as if I had invited you uh, to walk with me from where we are today on the campus here at Grace Place uh, to the outlet malls in San Marcos. If that gives you a little bit of an idea of the distance, uh, quite a distance for those who are walking. Not, not hard for us who have cars. Uh, 70 miles per hour would get us there in about 70 minutes. Uh, but they, they did not have vehicles, they didn't have cars. And so they were traveling and if you figure with uh, Mary expecting uh, they were, if they were to go at a pace of 10 miles per day, that would have been a seven day journey. If they somehow were able to go 20 miles per day, they would have been three and a half days and completely exhausted. Can you imagine making that walk from here uh, to the outlet malls in San Marcos? And you think about that drive. Many, many of you have made that drive maybe many times. And uh, when we just get a little bit outside of Pflugerville here on the 35 and, and you go to, uh, just before you start climbing up a little bit around Breaker Lane and all the way up to Runberg, that 
uh, by the time we got there, that would seem like Mount Everest for us to climb uh, just walking. And you can imagine all the hills and valleys between here and there uh, and all the all of this uh, journey that we would be taking and and the peril that they faced along the way. God had a plan for them on this journey, 70 miles from where they were to Bethlehem. Now, they went to Bethlehem because of their, they were ancestors of King David's. We read about the lineage of both, um, you know, Joseph and Mary and their lineages come down from King David, which was part of prophecy that Christ would be, uh, would come from that lineage, the Messiah. Bethlehem was their ancestral home. Bethlehem was a, a tiny little village of probably less than 100 people at this time. And Mary gave birth to Jesus. She, she wrapped him, in, it says in Scripture, in strips of cloth. And she didn't do that because they had forgotten to bring the baby clothes and the blankets along with them, or they were too poor to afford them. Uh, she did that because that was the first century custom of swaddling babies. Mary and, and Jesus, uh, you know, Mary laid Jesus in, in a manger, which was, uh, as we learn from Scripture, a feeding trough for the animals. And there, there are uh, these, as we read through this, are the facts of, of what happened in, in there as, as told to us through Scripture. You know, God's eternal plan for the world of redemption was a perfectly synchronized program of events that centered around the Savior's birth in Bethlehem. You know, when we take time to examine the details, it is really overwhelming uh, the facts that came together and that, that this was not an afterthought, but how God had prepared and God had planned. It was a carefully laid organizational plan of complexity. The Apostle Paul talked about it this way in Galatians 4, verses 4 through 5. He tells us, When the fullness of time had come, God sent forth His Son, born of a woman, born under the law, so that he might redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. As we look at this event, this, this profound happening, this event that we celebrate today, the birth of Jesus, it took place at just the right moment, precisely as God had prearranged it. It was a carefully planned and communicated uh, mission that God had laid out and, and uh, through his prophets, the spokesmen, those who were obedient to God's word was prophesied over centuries that it would happen this way. The Hebrew prophet Micah declared 700 years before the coming of the Messiah, he, he would be born in Bethlehem and Judah in the ancient city of David. You can read about it in uh, Micah chapter 5, verse 2. But as for you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you one who will go forth for me to be a ruler in Israel. His goings forth are from long ago, from the days of eternity. Now, 700 years later, a teenage couple, descendants of King David, are living in Nazareth, Galilee, a few days journey from Bethlehem, and Mary is due at any day to give birth. And going to Bethlehem had to be one of the furthest things from her mind uh, you know, to, to uh, be traveling at this point. And it would never enter her mind that, that she would need to go to Bethlehem. So how was it that God would bring this about? And we can see how God's timing is so perfected. And that this decree came down that everyone would have to travel back to their homeland. Which would bring Mary and Joseph precisely where God had, had ordained and said that it would happen. The birth of Jesus. God's timing as we read through the passages, is always perfect. God's timing for your life is always perfect as well. A sovereign God made ready a, a time and a people to fulfill his eternal purposes for the redemption of all lost mankind. 
There was a time and a place for this event to take place. Jesus was born at a time and he was born in a place in history. As we opened up and read in those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world and everyone went to their own town to register. And these words are important too. So Joseph also went up. God directed each step of Mary and Joseph long before uh, they were named or long before their parents thought of them or planned for them. God had planned for their lives and he had laid it out meticulously. Christmas should be for all of us a reminder and it should remind us of this fact that God has planned for us not only our todays, but he has also been in your tomorrows. I hope Christmas is for you that reminder that not only has God been in your today, in this moment in which you live, in this time, and among your family, but he's already entered into your tomorrows. I'm often reminded of how that's happened over my life. And uh, one of the ways that I'm reminded of it is uh, through my wife. I met my wife's parents and her oldest sister before I ever met her or even knew about her. I did not know that they had a, a younger daughter. Uh, I, had, I had met Debbie. I had met uh, her mom and dad. I met them when we were in Arkansas. It was a brief encounter, really, as, as, as you think about things, just a, a, just a moment's time, just a few hours that we had met and gotten to know each other. We knew them as... Uh, pastors. We knew them as evangelists at the time. They were traveling and ministering, but we didn't know them well, and I didn't know them very well. It was a brief encounter, and we didn't exchange phone numbers. We didn't exchange contact information, and from that uh, time, I had moved from uh, Arkansas to Arizona with my parents, and, and I had gone to work in a pharmaceutical lab and was a full-time volunteer as a youth pastor in my home church. Life was moving along at a rapid pace. God brought Michelle's family from Arkansas to Arizona to pastor a church in Phoenix, about five miles from where I lived. Interestingly enough, uh, the week before I met Michelle, I had prayed a prayer something like this. Lord, you know what is best for my life, and I really do trust you, but I believe that I'm ready <laughs> to meet the one that you want me to marry. And so if you think I'm ready, then guide my steps. And as I prayed that prayer in faith, I had no idea or thought that I would be reconnected with this family that I had met a year or so ago back in Arkansas and that anything like what would unfold in the next few years would unfold. But God had already visited my tomorrow. God had already visited Michelle's tomorrow. And every day, it seems like, at least monthly as well, I'm reminded of how God has been in my tomorrow before I got there and how he has left traces of what of his being there and open doors and open opportunities for us. It's beautiful to think about the story of the coming of Jesus being perfectly and precisely timed. It's quite another for you and I to think about God has also planned for us. He has prepared for us. He has something great in store for you and for me. A key understanding for us individually though is also that we must be people in motion. I read a moment ago in that passage that it said, so Joseph also went up. God can provide all the circumstances, all the opportunities. We can even have, uh, as Joseph did and Mary did, a, a, a compelling to go, a command to go. And yet we can still resist and fight against what God wants to bring into our lives. But in this instant, Joseph was willing to go up, to go where God was sending him, to move in the direction that God was, was providing and, and leading in the way. God directs and he provides, but you and I need to be obedient. 
It says that while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. That phrase, no room, means to clear or to make room means to clear space and to make a place for something that's important to us. You know, when we make room for, for things in our life, uh, it involves some action steps. It involves us engaging in activities that, that are going to make this possible. In life, the reality is we make room for what is important to us. You know, we carve out time to work out daily or three or four times a week. Uh, you've heard of people who plan uh, meticulously for mecations. They're uh, opportunities to get away and just uh, spend time, you know, with themselves and, and on, on vacation or with their uh, family, their nucleus family, and, and get away from everything else and just really enjoy and pamper themselves and take care of themselves. We make room for those kinds of things in our lives. You've heard of people, maybe someone has said that they have made room for their education and you have seen the sacrifices that they've made, they've studied, they've sacrificed sleep, their time, they've, they've applied for student loans and all the things that are involved in, in getting that next level of education is something that they desired and so they made room for it. But how many of us as we're listening today, have really made room for Jesus and all that he wants to do in our lives. Joseph and Mary both continued in Bethlehem until they found a place and someone who would make room for Jesus. They wanted to make room for what God wanted to bring through their lives. The question for us today is, where in your life have you made room for Jesus, room to worship him, room to study his word, room to hear his voice and obey him, room to serve in mission that he's given to each one of us, room to share your heart and surrender your will to him. The elephant in the room for every one of us every day is this, God made room for you. He's designed your today and your tomorrows and the question is, have you made room for him? The question, but the challenge is to see ourselves in the mirror of God's word and really get a clear picture of where we're going and what's happening in our lives. It's easy for us all to say, I have made room for Jesus. I show up and I worship and I go to church and I serve and I volunteer. But are we really getting a clear picture of what's going on in us? We can live extremely selfishly and believe that we are living unselfish. A posture of humility that is false can uh, cloak our lives. Jesus didn't talk about his sacrifice. He, he demonstrated the sacrifice that, that he was making. Bethlehem was full. Decisions had been made. Doors had been closed. No vacancy signs had been posted. There was no room. No room in one heart does not prevent God from acting in another heart. We've all seen families that uh, decide not to put God first in their life, but one member, maybe a child or a mother or a father, decides that they are going to give themselves to God and, and surrender completely to Him. So the decisions of others did not affect the decision of one who decided to make room for, for God. And this is, this is important, and I wanna bring this home. There are some people that are listening today that you are allowing the decisions of someone else to affect you. Maybe your children have said, we're, we're bored, we don't wanna to go to church. And so you're allowing that to affect what's going on in your life, or a, or a husband or a wife who says it's foolish for you to go to church, or in-laws or uh, family members that don't see the value in you pursuing God. And God wants to speak to you today and to say he's made room for you, and he wants to ask that you would make room for him in your today and in your tomorrow. He planned for you. 
this very moment of time in which we're living. He is asking if you will make room for him in your heart and in your life. Our refusal will not prevent his entrance into the lives of others, but it will, will prevent his entry into our lives. It's found in Revelation chapter 3, verse 19. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone will open up, I will come in. But our refusal to open that door will not prevent others from opening the door and receiving God. It will only prevent us from receiving Jesus Christ, from acting in the ways that he's prepared for us in our tomorrows, and going in a direction that will not lead to harm and death and destruction, but will lead to life and hope and the fulfillment of the glorifying of God and, and our, our lives being brought together as members of his great family. In this closing moment, I want to ask that you would consider, if you haven't already, welcoming him. First of all, acknowledging that he has ordered this world. It is, is the beginning of our faith is I believe in God. I believe he's there. I believe that the second step would be I believe that he cares about me. I believe he, he's concerned about me. He's not just uh, a, a Lord over, over this grand uh, universe that is not really concerned with the day-to-day -day details of lives, but that he loves me and cares about me. Acknowledging that he's ordered the world for you to live in. And despite the brokenness that sin has wrought all around us and perhaps in your own life as well, he wants a home in you. He wants you to make room for him. As Mary and Joseph made room for the baby that God was bringing into their life and into the world, he's inviting you today to make room for him in your life. I want to pray with you today as we're closing this, that this would be a moment in, in the, the calendar of your life where you make room for God. You get an honest look at where you have been and say, God, I have not always made room for you in my life, though you have been in my today and in my tomorrow, and you've planned for me, and this plan has been unfolding as I've followed you. I've not always made room for you, but today I want to make a commitment that that's going to happen. Lord Jesus, we come to you, and we ask God that you would help us to uh, see clearly in these, these closing moments what you have done and accomplished in us. If we take a look back in the past and we see how you prevented harm and damage, we see your rescue of our lives. We see your provision that you provided for us, took care of us. If there are those that are listening who didn't have a, a good mother or a good father, that you brought along someone that stood in the place you stood there sometimes even yourself in comforting them, in encouraging them, in loving them. And by looking into our past and we're seeing your hand upon our lives, we recognize that you, you are here today and you are in our tomorrows as well. God, we, we ask that you would, uh, would forgive us where we have not made room for you. God, that you would turn our hearts completely to you and that we would make full surrender today and make you Lord and leader of our life and follow you all the days of our life so that we may glorify your name forever. In Jesus' name, amen.